Hi, in today's video, I will show you how to create a Power Apps app with offline capabilities. This is a pretty extensive subject, but we want to keep the video short. So, I have already pre-built an app and I will navigate through it explaining the concepts of creating offline apps in Power Apps. Okay, let's get into it. So, we'll be using a SharePoint list as our data source, but this concept extends to any other, any other data source you want to use. So, we have two columns here, a very simple SharePoint list. Let's just add another item here for you to see. It's a text input field, and the other one is a choice field, an option set. So, let's choose anything here, and we are adding new fields. So, we we started up from this create an app feature here from SharePoint and Power Apps that it automatically creates an app for us, a fully functional app with three screens. And this is the app it creates for us. And then we started from here and we changed the app to come to this version that it's the offline one. So let's explain the offline capabilities using this one. So a very important thing you have to 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 know when you are creating an offline app is if you are connected or not. So we have this connection dot connected uh, tag here that we can use to, to know if we are online or offline. And because we are using a web browser and we are connected to the internet, we are always be, be we are going to always be online here. So what how can we try to simulate if we are online or offline through the web browser? So this this property here works uh, works perfectly if we are on a mo mobile phone. But when once we are here in the studio developing, a uh, great way to do it if we is adding up uh, toggle input button here, and then we can make the default value of it to be this connection that connected property that I have just showed. So we we can simulate it if we are online or offline, and throughout our whole app instead of looking and and Evaluating this property here, we'll be evaluating the value of this of this toggle button. Okay, and by making the default value, we just have to make it invisible once we publish, and we will we will uh, keep our our app functioning. Okay, so very important thing here. Another important thing is we have to change the connections uh, th throughout our whole app to a collection. So let let me show you. Uh, in the the online app this version here created for us we have this gallery connected to the data source so it's connected directly to the sharepoint list so we changed it to connect to a collection so when we are working with an offline app we always need to use collections and how, where uh, when is the best time to populate it i, I use the on start property of our app so if we come here to the this app section here and choose on start here, it's uh, this block of code here will run every time we open the app. So it evaluates if it's online. It's the this toggle bu the button that I have just show you. If it's online, it's going to populate our collection from the value, the actual values from the SharePoint list. And then this this function here is very important if we are, if we are creating an app with offline capabilities, both the save data and the load data. What we are doing here is we are saving this collection value into our user's device. So this is a, a way that we can name it, the our data into the user's device. And once we are retrieving it, we choose this the same name and we collect the same data source. OK. Here we, ch here we collect the actual items from the list and here we 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 save the the choice fields uh, alternative. So choice one, choice two, choice three, and we can do it as well if we are using a lookup column. It's the same uh, concept here. And if we are offline, so this is done if we are online, and if we are offline, we just load the data and put into the collections. Uh, this local collection here is. Uh, is populated into the add function when we add new items and we are offline. We we collect the data into a local local collection. I will show you later. Oh, so okay, our gallery now is it's it's associated with our collection. Here in our refresh button, we we check if it's online 
and if it's online, it, it refreshes the, the data source, and then we refill our collection with all the items. So we have just included here a new item, so we can click refresh, and it should bring us the, the new item we have included directly into the data source. And we have the sync button here that iterates through all our local items that were added while we are offline, and then it patches uh, it into SharePoint. So with this command, we can add new items into SharePoint. So by using the default tag here, it, it creates new items in SharePoint. So we can edit items or create new items. But here in this video, we are just covering the add new ones, but it's, it's very similar if we want to add, edit or remove it. Uh, after we iterate through all items here, we clear the collection and we save data. So our local, local collection will be updated with, uh, with empty values. Okay, let's go to the add function, the add screen. And here we have ch also changed this button here. Let me talk firstly about this error message we are receiving here. It's basically saying that the save data command the data that we use to store data in the into the user's device is not supported while we are in a browser. Let me show you. But it's only a runtime error and it's not compromising our app. And in in fact, when we are uh, into uh, a smartphone, it's not an error. It's just here because we are into the browser. So there was a pro problem saving your data. Can data cannot be saved when running in a web browser? But it's not a big deal here. OK, we have uh, changed this, this button here, the unselect property of it. It was just a submit form that it's, uh, when we are connected to the data source, we can do it. But here we are not connected. We are connected to our collection. So uh, basically what we do here. So uh, regardless if we are online or offline, we have to collect this data into our exhibition collection or our, our view collection, let's say it. And we can do it uh, before this if clause. And then once we add it, we just save the data. Then we are going to check. If we are online, we can save the data directly into SharePoint. And if we are offline, we just save it into a local collection. So by using the collection command, we are appending this data into uh, this collection. Uh, and if we want, this is only the the adding part of it. But if we want to to include here as well the edit part and the delete part, we should uh, type it here uh, the type of the the operation we are performing. And then once we are in the iteration of all the items, we can do different ways, different operations. Okay, and that's it. Let's keep the add. And here after we we update each collection, we save the data. OK, so now let's showcase it working. Let me see if we are on or offline. This simulation, we are on. Let's turn it offline. Let's click here. Let's click here to run the app. Let's say we are inserting a, a new value. A, OK, I mean, it's inserting. Let's see. So I just inserted an offline item, and let's check if it's into SharePoint. It, it shouldn't be, right? Because we are offline. So it's not here. Let me hit refresh. It's not here. Let's continue here, start uh, adding new items. So we don't have a back function, but it's really easy to add if you want. Let's hit here and let's include three new items. So now we come back to the gallery screen and we can see here we have a counter of three offline items. Now we are going to change it to online and hit sync. So now it's grabbing all these items and inserting into SharePoint. So if we come back here into SharePoint. It, it's already showing us to, here to us. And, and that's it for today. I hope you, you like uh, our episode and see you next time.